what is the ultimate wilderness bug out weapon or gun? So this seems to be a really, really popular topic nowadays. <laughs> You're in our gun shop. Uh, we're not opening open for about 30 minutes. We are seeing customers up front, but this is a question that we have come up literally every day come into our shop, people are like, I'm worried about the world, I'm worried about the world melting down. Uh, you know, it's something, they all use the word, you know, SHTF, right? What if there's an SHTF snare? Like, what do I do? What do I buy? What do I get? People are concerned. And when you're motivated by fear, you don't make really good rational decisions. Um, God's word, 2 Timothy 1.7 said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Where, and I think what this scripture says, if you really think about it, where fear exists, a sound mind cannot exist. So you need to you need to view everything that you're thinking about doing or changing or buying, you need to view it outside of the realm of fear. But it also does say in Proverbs, it says, Consider the ant in all her ways, who stores up food in the summer for the winter. So there is a level of prepping that makes a lot of good sense. Um, but, you know, what is the ultimate, what is the best bug out weapon? A lot of that is going to determine what your plans really are and where you're going. So let me back up just a little bit on this. I'm going to preface this by saying, what is the best bug out weapon or what are the best bug out weapons if you're gonna be going to the wilderness or the woods? And then I'm going to, I'm gonna really give you like as sober of a thought as I can give you regarding bugging out. Now, there's not enough land to go around in the United States. If everybody wanted their own acre of land, just sit down and do the math. It's very easy to figure out, oh, there's not enough land for everybody to bug out to. And if you go look at what happened during the Great Depression, and I'm gonna post links to the scriptures below, I'm gonna post links below to what happened in the United States during the Great Depression. Uh, our our wildlife was nearly decimated. To this day, we have practices in different states by the Game Freshwater Fish Commissions, Wildlife Commissions. They come and they restock lakes, they restock turkeys. Uh, if there are problems with deer, they will pull tags. They still only issue tags for moose and elk in other states for a reason. And what is that reason? The reason is that <laughs> reason is there are not enough deer, elk, and moose to go around to feed everyone in the United States. That is why we depend so heavily on our farmers who raise and grow food, cattle, sheep. If you want to eat a goat, eat a goat. Um, but there is not enough, there are not enough animals to go around. Uh, literally, uh, our wildlife back in the 1920s and 30s was eviscerated by overhunting. And I don't know what the, I think the world's, the world's, I think the United States population right now is like 307, 370 million, something like that. I'll go check it. Uh, we have probably, you know, what, five, ten times the population we had back then? Maybe, maybe more. I'll go look and see. I'll post a link as well. <clears throat> but if in your mind you are planning on, let's say you live in close enough proximity to Wyoming or Idaho or Montana or the Canadian border, you know, somewhere where you think, hey, yes, I'm gonna go bug out. Not only is it gonna be cold, but the other thing is, um, there's a lot of other people thinking exactly the same thing. And when you look at how many people there are in the United States, it doesn't give everybody you know, their own acre of land. Now, I understand those who are caught in big cities, if you're in Chicago, you're in New York, you're in places that are densely, densely populated, you're probably not going to get out anyway. Uh, I wanna recommend to you um, two book series. Um, one of them is One Second After. I think it will put into perspective for you actually what will happen if we have a real SHTF scenario. That book is called One Second After. And um, uh, the other is, yeah, it's by A American. Uh, I think it's called Going Home. No, it's, uh, I'll, I'll post it, I'll post it below. There's, there's two book series right now I'm having a brain fart. Um, but they're really good book series and it, I think it will give you a reality of how much time it takes to plan to prep, to plan to bug out, to plan to go somewhere. Those of you who are planning now are a little bit behind. Um, and let me tell you what we did back in 2012, 2013. Um, I saw coming what's coming because I was stupid enough to get involved in politics. And uh, because I saw the writing on the wall, we sold our 
big house, a little yard, moved out to some property, got a little house of property. Um, and we have taken some steps since then to watch out for ourselves. Uh, my plan is not to bug out initially, it is to bug in. However, if you talk to any special forces groups, you talk to military, you talk to people, what they're trained is, is people who stay in one spot, who cannot be mobile and cannot move, they ultimately consume them, kill them. Um, it's a little bit different scenario in the US. We're going to be dealing with, if we have an SHTF, we have a meltdown, we're going to be dealing with a different type of scenario. Read the books and you'll understand. The books will help you tremendously. But this video is specifically about um, what are the best bug out weapons. And uh, I'm gonna try to use a couple small examples here so you can, uh, you can um, really put in your mind what I'm saying because some, some people are going, you're a blankety blank idiot. Now, that's the worst gun you could use. Nobody like you know, Nobody should use those. You can't kill anything with them. So I'm gonna say we're going to a wilderness or a forest. There's actually a lot of forests in Central Florida, which will be, whew, they will be, a friend of mine just moved to Central Florida on a river or a lake down there somewhere near Lake Okeechobee, and that's where he's gonna stay. Uh, we have other people and friends who recently bought property in Montana. Some people are moving to Idaho. Um, those are wilderness survival areas, like they are planning on going there. Um, but if you have no place to go and you're just planning on getting in your truck and driving as far as your gas will take you, then there's a little bit of a different way to look at this. And by the way, we have people coming out of the front part of our store. So uh, here's how I want to help you look at this. Um, the two guns that we've narrowed it down to are small caliber, very small caliber rifle because you can still kill big game with a rifle. The other is a very big caliber pistol because if you're gonna be in Idaho or Montana or Wyoming, you're going to need a large caliber pistol, uh, a bear pistol, okay? So I'm gonna show you kind of the idea of um, what it looks like as far as weapons. Actually, I'm not. I, I'm gonna say, you might wanna reference this bag and you might wanna reference this over here because if you hadn't noticed, uh, YouTube kinda hates the ch -ch <laughs> like they really do hate it. So um, we're gonna stay away from a lot of that, showing you those. However, the, the two things that we've narrowed it down to is a really small caliber, very reliable, very good rifle and also a very large caliber pistol. Both of those are what you would want to have if you went into and you know, the wilderness. The rifle that we have all narrowed it down to is the Ruger 10-22. Now, so 22, who, you know, this is, I know there's a lot of people that say, I'm going to take my 458 SOCOM, or I'm going to take even a 223556. I'm taking an AR-15. Um, I shouldn't say 458 SOCOM. It's, I'm kind of making a joke out of that. But, you, you know, you're thinking, I'm going to take a bigger caliber rifle because I can kill bigger animals with it. Um, and remember, I just said, our deer population is going to be eviscerated pretty quickly. There's going to be a lot of possums and coons and squirrels still left when those are gone. Uh, your 1022 rifle, there's a lot of great things about it. Not only is it incredibly reliable, it's easy to fix, um, it's inexpensive, but this is 50 rounds of ammo. Like, that's 50 rounds of ammo. That's a hundred rounds of ammo. I'm probably, I'm gonna guess, I'm probably at maybe six ounces, eight ounces there. You're not talking about a large amount of weight. So that's a hundred rounds of ammo. If you're gonna take your two, two, three, your five, five, six, 20, 40, 68, that's a hundred rounds of ammo right there. hundred rounds of ammo. Um, you have to plan like you're gonna be there a while. 100 rounds, 100 rounds. This is a few ounces, this is over a pound. I don't know exactly how much it is, but it's heavy. You start adding that really up, and how many, actually I forgot how many rounds this is. Uh, military grade, Hornady. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. You know, 500 rounds. That box weighs 
25 pounds, 30 pounds, and it's really not all that many. I mean, this will be a standard loadout for a vest, 200 and, 250 rounds. So, uh, yeah, that's right. No, that's, let me grab it. Two hundred fifty rounds. Two hundred fifty rounds of twenty-two long rifle. Two hundred fifty pounds of rifle ammo. Big difference in cost. Big difference in weight. Massive amounts of loadout required for somebody to carry around two hundred fifty pounds of ammo. If you're wanting, to see, so here's, you know, you can carry around two hundred rounds of ammo just like this. Very easy. Very small to do. Not a problem at all. Um, is it harder to kill big game with a 22 rifle? You know, you have to be proficient. Um, I was talking with one of my buddies in fifth group one day, and he said um, we were we were we were discussing 45 caliber versus nine millimeter. I shot a 45, he shot a nine, and uh, I wasn't being arrogant really because I respect him completely, but. He said, why do you carry a 45? I said, well, it's a bigger round. It's got more stopping power. He said, why do you need more stopping power? I said, well, you know, that's, that's what I'm told. You take the most knockdown, the most stop, stopping power. He said, just shoot him in the right spot. <laughs> so if you're proficient and you can shoot big game in the right spot, um, 22 will do a very good job. A friend of mine named Terry. Terry, if you see this, sorry, I'm not saying your last name. Uh, when he was younger, this is years ago, he used to make a suppressor, put it on the end of his 22 rifle, and he would um, shoot deer all year long with his 22 rifle. Uh, he said, yep, hit him in the right spot, and it dropped just like that. So let me go on to a pistol as well. So what I'm suggesting is over here. I'll see if I can zoom in on it and show you. Uh, but you really need your rifle for game, for hunting, also for long range self-defense. Um, and a pistol you need for things such as bears and close range with other humans. I personally know that a lot of things will not stop bears. I mean, even if the shot is placed right, you're going to be really, really burdened to try to take down a bear with a 9mm. Um, so my bear gun, my handgun, uh, well, not this one, but the one that I would suggest uh, is getting a large caliber, 44 Magnum, something like that. Um, or my choice is a 10 millimeter. Uh, I will post a link below so you can see them on our site. But a 10 millimeter is a great round. It's a heavy round. Uh, those are the type of things that you want to consider. And listen, you can't take a thousand rounds of 10 millimeter with you. It's not your regular everyday weapon. You're talking about ammo that's heavier than this 5.56 five, is. So when you're thinking about when you're thinking about bugging out, don't have fear. Fear is not going to give you a sound mind. Think ahead. If you're really wanting, you know, I don't know how much time we have to plan. I don't know what's going to happen in the United States. I don't. I don't know where we're headed in the next six months. I don't know what's going to happen in November. I don't know um, what's going to happen two years from now. Uh, it's obvious the more they protest and go after Trump, though, that there is uh, truth on the side of the right, and there's a lot of lying on the side of the left, not that there's not lying on both sides, but as we roll into this election, if you haven't prepared at all, uh, you need to start thinking about some of these things. You need to start thinking about growing your own food, raising your own animals, and taking care of yourself if we have an SHTF scenario. Hey, do me a favor, like and subscribe. We've got a couple good topics coming up. Always want to be good information for you when you're thinking about how to take care of your family. Thanks.